Hello again, I'm Emilio Santini here from the Corning studio of the Museum of uh, uh, Glass in Corning, New York. I'm here for another video. I hope I'm not going to bore you to death as I usually do. Uh, as usual, our video or the video that I do are more instructional uh, than uh, showing off. I'm going to do a demo with my friend and assistant, James Watson. So I'm going to do half of the video, half of the piece is going to be done by me, the other half Mostly a stopper is going to be done by James. But before I start the video, we're gonna, I'm going to show to you, tell you and the class, to you, viewer in the class, a few things about Goblet in Venice, the names that we have of different parts, because I think in the United States there is a little bit, there is a little bit of confusion about uh, Goblet and various parts. So I'm going to move here in front of, stay, stay, in front of her. So, Goblets, goblet is bicchiere, okay, that's the name of the goblet, uh, translates in, in bicchiere. There is also chalice, calice, or tipetto. A tipetto would be a goblet of this kind that has uh, an object in the middle, usually a, an arp or a lyre shape with the, an animal in the middle. And uh, the different parts are the top part, there is the cup, we call it bevante, from bere, that means to drink. The central part, uh, we call it stem, gambo, from gamba. And the bottom part, piede, foot, the exact translation uh, in English, that means uh, foot in, in, in English and in Italian as well. Then a very few other parts is the, on the top of the goblet, sometimes you have a little uh, lip wrap. And, we, and it can be even in the middle of the goblets or the bottom of the goblets, uh, of the goblet. It's just a thread. It's called filetto, the thread. Uh, the connection part between the cup and the stem, we call it avoglio or avoglio. Sometimes in Venetian, we eliminate the, the, the G uh, when we pronounce it. Then we have those parts here. Usually we call them the wings. Little, um, oh gee, I don't remember the Italian word for wings. <laughs> anyway, uh, and uh, <clears throat> on top of it, there are those little decorations that we put. There's a thread that then we twist it, and we call this morisa. But you can also have a morisa around the cup, or around the stem, or around the, on somewhere on the foot. Uh, basically, it's a thread that is twisted. So the Morisa is a twisted thread. And then we have, uh, as I said, did I say the stem? Yeah, oh, and Sierra is a flat disc. So a flat disc can be anywhere on the stem. You can have a stem made out of various flat discs. In Venetian, it's called Sierra. Uh, you write it with an L, but in Venetian, we don't pronounce the L. And Sierra is basically what the Venetian used to name uh, that part, and is a, a flat disc that in the old time, in the 13, 1400, when you went to uh, the apothecary, you bought some lozenges. You call lozenge? Yeah, lozenge. And they were shaped like a disc. That's where the name comes from. So I hope this is clear enough. Uh, you're going to have it on YouTube for uh, the entire life of YouTube. And now we're going to move back to the torches and start making our piece. So part of the piece is going to be, you can move in front. Part of the piece is going to be uh, blown, and part of the piece is going to be solid. OK? So James, we're going to work uh, with black glass, mostly. Uh, we had some part that we pre-made uh, yesterday with James. So James is going to totally make the piece out of hollow uh, black glass. I'm going to use a hollow black tubing as well uh, to blow the central part and the foot. And then we're going to assemble everything together. So if you want to start. Yeah. And uh, again, for my students, if you have any questions, unfortunately, you can see only part of the student. The other, one, the other side of the students are over here. Don't ask me what their names are, because I don't remember, as usual. And. Um, <coughs> So as usual, I explain a little bit what I'm doing and how I hold the glass in the flame. Go ahead and start. 
Oh, so I'm starting with a piece of this heavy walled uh, 32 millimeter. So we prepped our points. And uh, um, for this particular color, I like to preheat them in the kiln. So this, this point that I pulled ahead of time is, is ready to go ahead and just pick up and put right in the heat. Typically, if I were to do something like this cold, I'd like to heat it up really slowly. And I'll just use a paper towel to wipe the kiln dust away real quick. So I'll be making uh, a raven sculpture like this, which will be top the top part of the bottle. And this is just kind of a short demo on uh, hollow sculpting. And most of the work that I'll be doing, I'll use just a, a straight, sharp knife. So let me know when you want to me to stop to talk and you explain what you're yeah. doing. Well, if you'd like to explain anything that I'm Well, I'm going to explain a little bit about the pulling points because, uh, again, you already saw in some of the other video, but for this class and for the other class, classes online that are there. So the way that I pull my point is I, I hold the glass uh, in my left hand because I'm right-handed, and I rotate with my left hand, and I pull the point with my right, and I create a hook with my fingers, and then the thumb and the index are the ones that imprint most of the rotation. And the other two fingers follow. The last finger, the pinky, pushes uh, against the palm a little bit because if you don't do that, the uh, tubing will wobble in your hand. Okay? So you don't have to rotate in one direction. You can go away from you. You can rotate toward yourself, or you can go back and forth. There are people that are right-handed. They rotate with their right hand and then pull with your left. I think it's better this way, but it's not a rule. Um, nothing is set on stone. Okay. So let's go in the flame and rotate. And so what I'm working on is just making that taper, which will be the bottom of the raven. And then I'll, I'll make what's called a Maria, where this will set in top of the the bottle, the Maria will match up with the Maria, which will be the top of the bottle. So it doesn't tip over. Top over. Tip over yeah. or top over? Tip over. Tip over. OK. When you work with the <coughs> tubing at the torch, there are two major schools. There is a school that arrives directly from uh, scientific glass blowing. So instead of uh, pulling points, or mostly instead of pulling points, what they do, they use a tube that is already pre-sized to the size of the point that they want. And they basically, what they do, they, or what you do, if you use that school, or that way of making it, you take your, the end of your tube, and you heat it up, narrow it down the diameter, and then you attach your blowing tube at the very end. Okay, so you basically have a pre-made point is out of, out of a tube. And then instead of blowing through the points like I usually and normally do, and like normally people do in, uh, in Italy, uh, you're gonna have a, a blow hose that goes into your mouth. So I always say that uh, it's uh, stupid to say that you should use one method or the other method and uh, being uh, faithful only to a, one or the other one. Because uh, there are certain things that I make that I use the blowholes, and certain other things that I make that it's better to use the, the point. Okay, so I hope uh, we give a, we close that controversy that there is in the field of lamp working. So you use which one is better for that occasion. Okay. So every time that I blow something, I constrict the two hands. And in doing that also I recenter the point. And uh, you can constrict it using the diamond shears, like this. Or even easier, you can use this corner here of your marver.
very gently. At the beginning, it's just the weight of the glass. And the stiffer it becomes, the more it push down. OK, there you are. You're doing it on the other side. You're doing the Maria. Making the Maria. Or the Sierra. And uh, as you all can see online, that we have the new style, the new hairstyle. Thank you. If you want to come near me, please. <laughs> we have our own personal fashion show, the new hairstyle. <laughs> this is Sasha, my interpreter. So and what I've got, I've just started this Maria. This will be where the, the sets into the bottle, and then the rest of this will actually go down into the bottle. And then I'll just start to separate basically the body of the raven from the head. Now I'm going to set up the neck. So this little part here is going to become the neck of the, of the object that I'm making of the blown part. So you always set up the neck first, and then you blow the rest of the body of your uh, object. Furnace workers do the same. And I have to make it at the diameter wide enough so the stop that he's making is going to slide inside later on. So I'm just disconnecting my handle that I used to actually shape the, the bubble. And I'll just do a little bit more shaping on the head, and then I can start to sculpt, sculpt with a knife the, the details into it. Oh, I'm there. <laughs> OK. I'm wearing this because when I blow the big bubble, it's going to the radiating heat is going to burn my arm. So I'm wearing a. In Italian, we call it, in Venetian, we call it manegotto, manicotto. Not like the food, but actually it's similar to the food. Because manica means sleeve, so manicotto is a big sleeve. It's made out of Kevlar. And the only part that I'll be actually adding to this piece is the beak, which I made ahead of, uh, ahead of time. And the beak's solid. So I'll just actually start to kind of define the top of the wings with the knife, just by with this, just the center uh, fire of the torch. And I'll go ahead and go ahead and start the same arch on the other side. So I'm pushing in and making the gather a little bit shorter because it's easier to handle it in the flame. So I'm gathering into a shorter tube. <clears throat> now, from a spherical shape, I'm going to make it slightly elongated. So I'm going to heat up the uh, F on my left, and then let it shrink down a little bit and stretch it gently, just gently. So, good. 
I'm using uh, for the viewers that are glass maker, glass blowers. I'm using uh, black heavy wall that is made in China. Oh, shouldn't say that. Not made in China, actually. Imported from a foreign country. Right? Now I've got just the, the basic shape of the top of the wings carved. Now I'm just kind of going to finish up each wing little by little. No, we're just gonna leave it open on the end. Where? The very bottom. Yeah. We could, if we put a if we put a hole in the bird's body somewhere, we could actually close this off and, and make it solid. It. Yeah. You have to have one side open. Yeah, you could either just poke a hole in the back with the tungsten pick, or just you know you wouldn't want it to be out front to be visible really, but. There's a couple different ways you could go about it. You could either do the tungsten pick or you could just heat up one little area and blow a little tiny hole out like if, like if it were an ornament. Uh, at this point, I just don't really want to heat that back up. I, I will, but I'm kind of working from the top of the bubble down at this point. And then I'll put it in the kiln if I feel like anything's getting too cold. I'm so happy that I'm not the only one who's got an accent. <laughs> you can probably guess where I'm from by my accent. Hey. But anyway, I'm from He's from New West York. Virginia. New York. <laughs> He's from New York. I'm from Connecticut. <laughs> Doing stuff like this, this blow hose is pretty handy. If, if you accidentally kind of press too hard on a section, you can you can just heat it back up and blow it out a little bit more if it, if you wind up pressing a little harder than you thought. Yeah. If it gets hotter than you thought, maybe. You also notice that sometimes when he presses with the knife, you know that, that he blows because if you heat it up and press with the knife without blowing, the entire section that he preheated goes in. That's one thing that nice, makes it nice about this real fine flame. If you were to do that with the big outer fire, it would, it would heat up a lot more area than you want to make such tight little curves and stuff. Well, after you do so many moves on this with, with the knife, I, I usually like to just quench it in water once I feel like it, it is just a plastic handle, so it does, it would get hot if I never quenched it in water, but just by quenching it in water, it, it keeps it cool for another few moves anyway. I put a gutter of glass at the very bottom, clear, and I make a disc or sierra. It's a very simple operation. So the shape that I chose, we were wondering, James and I, uh, if we wanted to make a, uh, between an elongated shape. So I pre-made something like this. I thought this was too long. So we decided to make a, uh, between that, this, or a round one. And then with the power of that uh, was uh, put upon me by this museum, I decided to make the final decision and I went for this shape that is uh, reminds a little bit of the Veronese shape uh, like those miniatures here so 
This is called Veronese shape. Well, it's called Veronese because uh, Paolo Veronese uh, depicted it in one of his paintings. And then uh, uh, Zekin, there was the designer uh, and artist at the beginning of the, the 19th century, no, 18th, uh, sorry, at the beginning of the 1900, uh, mid, -19 mid 1900, when Venini opened his factory, he hired him to design. He saw this in the painting and he decided to um, remake the piece. And since uh, it was, he derived directly from the painting, he called it the Veronese, he called it the Veronese object. Now I finish with this. I could put it there and let it cool down, but later on I have to reheat this one and fuse it together with uh, another piece. And so to avoid any cracking, it's easier if I keep it over here, if it fits in, and it does, lucky me. Right. Okay. And now I'm gonna prepare the bubble for the, the piece of uh, glass for the foot. And at this point, yeah. I'm almost yeah, done carving nice. the wings, mm -hmm. and then next I'll uh, just I'll attach the beak and then start to work on the details for the face. After I let it set in the kiln for just a minute. At this point, all that bottom shaping that I've done, the very bottom of it's really cold, and I'm kind of skeptical to put it right back in the flame. Put another point. Why do I step away? Because it's too hot over there. So it's easier if I move it, you know, just in the winter, I stay close by the torch, but in the summer, in the summer, I just step away, it's less heat. Okay. Hold it for a second. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. So after all that carving, just the initial lines of the wing, I just go back and, and just kind of do a little tweaking on it if it, Need some adjustment, I can I can reheat it and carve it. But I feel like a lot of the times when you carve glass like this, it, it does leave a lot of stress in the glass. Uh, sometimes because of the the knife is too cold, much. just metal to glass is it's not because too much coffee. Well that too that, the that has an effect. <laughs> okay. No sausages, okay. No sausages. <laughs> I said that. Oh, sorry. And you don't have to, but I like to put just a little bit of wax on this knife. It just kind of makes these moves a little smoother sometimes. Because the metal, if the metal is hot, it wants to stick, so it doesn't, like, it doesn't glide quite as smoothly over the glass. And you can go, I mean, with this kind of simple design, you know, any bird would be relevant with this. At this point, it could be any kind of bird, but I've just chosen the raven. You'll see what's next. The other go for the raven. Bird. No rush. We have plenty of time. Beautiful. Thank you. Very nice.
So now I'm just gonna put this in the kiln for a minute and let everything get heated back up while I get the beak ready. Get, get my tools ready for, to do the eyes. Oh, for the, for the smoke? Nah, <laughs> finish this up first. Uh, made this little tool for the eyes out of a pipe, basically just nice. a steel pipe that's kind of sharp on the e edge, and I've just squeezed it so that it's more of a eye shape than a circle. Nice. And also use uh, just a small little dental pick to actually kind of stretch it after I make the impression. So I'm preparing the bubble for the for the foot. That's what I'm doing. And I'm just heating the beak up. Since I didn't have this heated in the kiln, I don't really want to stick it directly in the flame. And then when I make attachments like this, something solid to a hollow bubble, the blow hose comes in really handy when you when you actually attach the two pieces, if you just give a little bit of air into it, it helps that seam become one piece. And every time you go in and out of that kiln, you pick up this dust. You can use paper towel as long as you don't hold it on there. Or like one of these Kevlar gloves work pretty well. For what? The kiln dust. Brick dust. See how much easier it is using the blowpipe. Otherwise, you would have to hold it like Pull this. Pull it out. And, and it's not going to see what he's doing, he's only guessing. So in this case, it's much better to use the blow hose instead of using just the putting in your mouth like this. Yeah, making these attachments like this, you want both of these pieces to be equally really hot. Kind of just going by the glow of the glass, how red it gets, or orange. So I make the attachment, press it on, and then kind of look at it from all angles. And just by blowing a little bit, it makes it, it smooth, it smooths that seam out. And hopefully you don't, after you'd make that seam by blowing into it, you don't really have to go back and work that you connection much you more. You want to make the feathers? We'll I see. like it with the long one. It's much nicer. The feathers? No, the long, uh, the long beak compared to the other one. Yeah, I think the rev raven is kind of just has a bigger beak than a crow, so it's, they always kind of have that point on the end. But just to be sure, I like to go back and heat that just in case it didn't make the perfect connection and just blow a little bit more. And since I got that connection so hot, I'm just going to define just a little bit more right where that mouth meets the face. And if you, you could do this with like an open beak by making two separate sections and putting them together. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell you something about the, the foot. If you saw what I was doing. First I started with a round bubble, well round, I blew and pushed it. So it was a little bit lower at the bubble. And then what I did, I hit it up uh, left, center, right, center, left, center, right. And while I was keeping pressure with my mouth, I pushed in even more. So I ended up with a lower bubble. Then you have two choices when you make feet. You can open a foot, so we don't do first thing. We don't do like for nurse worker, they, they start with a round bubble and they open the foot all the way flat. 
So uh, we start with the low bubble, like a squatty onion, sort of like. And then what we do, um, you have two choices. As I just did, I preheated one side, the side that's going to touch, be attached to the rest of the object, basically the top of the foot. And I heat it up, sh let it shrink down and stretch a little bit. So I pre-make this slope. And then this rest of the round part of the um, blown object is going to be open into a foot. So it's going to be sloped and flat. The other choice is, uh, that you have is uh, instead of pre-making this, you end up with something like this on this side, on both sides. So you, make, you open it all the way flat, like furnace worker. And then you go on the other side of the foot, put in the flame inside the foot. And with these jacks, you just pull out, and you're going to create this slope. It's much, much more difficult. So my advice to the people that are starting, and they are not super skillful, uh, is to pre-make the slope first. So I'm going to make another flat disk. Okay. Reheat it. I need to be careful that there are no cold connection because when I press it down, sometimes you create cold connection with the black and the clear. So what you do is just reheat it enough so they melt down. Okay. Then retool it to make it flat. Okay. Now I have two choices. I can point it here naturally. That's uh, you have to do it no matter what if you want to open this foot. But then I have two choices. I can after I open it, I can put it in one of those and one on the grabber, or I can put a, a ponte underneath. Okay, the ponte is much, much more difficult. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on the grabber, but not, but not right now. What I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna take this and save it inside the kiln. I'm gonna, why? Because if I put it here, then this part goes down, there is the joint, and if I go back and try to reheat everything, it's gonna crack, so I would have to preheat it very, very slowly, just with gas, and it would take me like 10 minutes wasted. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna park it in here, okay? While I'm showing you another thing. So the central part that we're gonna have is gonna be, what is the joint? The central part is gonna be more or less like this. So there's gonna be a stylized, uh, um, what do you call it? Owl? Owl. What? Owl. Owl. And, <laughs> sorry, owl, and with the two wings. So I'm gonna show you very quickly how I made my wings, and I'm gonna save it there, but we pre-made the owl just in case uh, we didn't have enough time to finish it, because just to make the two wings and the owl, it would take about half an hour, more, or more. So I'm gonna show you how I made my wings, or the wings of the owl. What point are you there? Well, I just sculpted the eyes, and the, so I've got all the details done on top. Are you really. going to make the, the feathers or not? Uh, yeah, I mean, Whoop. where are we at? 30 minutes. Yep. Yeah, I can do a little more sculpting yeah. to it. Yeah, please. More details. Um, we'll do, do that it. since since we've got time. Good. So let me show you how I made my wings. Saw this coming. Anyone got a real lighter that works like all the no, I got a striker. Thank you. That should work. Yep. Perfect. Uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do are going to be long pieces of glass that I'm going to stretch and taper, taper on top of each other. So they would be sort of like remind you of uh, feathers. Well, that's a busy place there. Yeah. I guess we should have cleaned it out. So the difficult, the most difficult part of this object that we're making is the putting it together. That's the most critical part. So I'm tapering them, it, sorry. Mm. 
And then I keep adding on top of this one. Go ahead, work, work. Yeah, so now what I'm doing is just going to make a little more detail into the wings, kind of just separate it into more feathery look rather than just this smooth, smooth look. Actually, can you erase this because I screwed up? I start again. What? I didn't understand anything. Oh, if there is more space, yeah, thank you. You're very kind. Leather, leather. No, 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 no. I think we are okay. I think we are okay because the three of them are gonna come out pretty soon, so. So this one may have wound up a little bit bigger around than kind of what we were talking about earlier. So it's all right. Uh, Don't worry about it. We just kind of have to adjust when we get ready to make the opening, or when Emilio gets ready to make the opening of that vessel. We may have to just kind of readjust a little bit. Or we just heat it, heat this back up, and pull it skinnier so it actually fits. Oh, it's all right, thanks. Thank you. One more. So this is the way that I made my, the, made the wings for the, the owl. And I show you how I saved it into the uh, kneeler. So I got a ponty. Sorry. So before I did the ponty, what I, put a ponty on, I pre-cut it, the section that I... Yeah. Okay. Then what I did, I made two of those wings and I saved them in, in the annealer here, okay? And then uh, what I did, I made the body of the owl. Then I'm gonna show you now if I can take it out. 
it's a stylized owl. And uh, so the piece will go on the top of the owl. And then I attach the two wings on the owl. So what I'm going to do now, oops, upside down. Let me get this out of here, and then I'll have to put, put it somewhere else. OK. No. Will no, you no. put this in your kiln down there, please? It's kind of hot. So that was my backup plan right there, in case this was falling apart on me. Can you hold it? Yep. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the owl together with uh, this piece first, OK? Yep. Perfect. And then this section that I'm working on won't actually be attached hot. This will just be a separate stopper for the vessel. So this is kind of the time consuming part of this. It's hard, might be hard to see from where you're at, but there's, I've just done one, one row nice. of feathers and then I'll go back and do another row. Oh, you have, you have 20 minutes. I do want to just put this back in the kiln for just a minute because this stuff's at the very bottom. I'm questioning right now. Do I have space to go in? Yep, plenty. So I put it together here. Now I'm going to open the foot and then we're going to touch the foot on the bottom of this. Let it go. Close, close. Thank you. Perfect. Fantasticus. And I'll watch this part while that thing heats up. There was uh, some dust from the kiln. Why not? What, for whom? For the, the for the glass? No. For my hands? Yeah. I have asbestos hands. That's how you get the calluses. That's yeah, how you, you burn your hold. fingers. That's, That's how, how you, you build your calluses. Point. So everybody <laughs> burning your finger today to build calluses. <laughs> okay. You're almost done with it? Yep, we got one Perfect. more row of feathers to do. And then Perfect I'm timing. Gonna wrap it up. <coughs> Excuse me. I could spend all day carving on it, but I'd actually consider just doing, oh, sending yeah. this over and have someone sandblast the details into yeah. it rather than doing you the carving You have 15 on it. minutes. Usually when I pull something out of the kiln and if it's got dust down here, I don't worry about it too much right now because I'm not going to heat it. If I were going to heat that area, I'd wipe it off, but I'll more than likely put this back in the kiln again before I'm finished with it. So I'm going to open my foot, mostly spinning it. And the technique that I'm going to use is the, I'm going to go from this shape to almost an open cup with straight wall, just rotating in the, in the flame. And I slowly, slowly open it, not too fast, otherwise it spins out and out of control, okay? This is one way of doing it. So you can see there is off center, I don't know if you see the camera can catch it. So with my paddle, since I'm going slow, I can correct it as much as I can, okay? And then keep opening slowly until I get to almost uh, a cup shape by itself without using any tools. 
Okay, you can still correct it if you are. Okay. And then when I get to this shape, I boost the flame and I rotate faster. And the centrifugal force should open the foot. More or less, okay. I always grab my um, jacks because I can always help it at the very end, okay? And there you are. I mean, the foot is almost perfectly round, okay? So I didn't use any tool at all, but you have to go slow at the beginning. Don't start rotating very fast, okay? Then I put it down here and see if it is flat enough. Now the difficult part is to put everything together. And hopefully we're not gonna crash everything because uh, I could put it on a ponty. Should we put it on a ponty or should we put it on the grabber? Grabber. grabber? Okay, the class says grabber. Okay. I can put it on a ponty if you want. No. Why? Because it's They're fun. both sketchy, but. It will crack? Thank you very much. <laughs> you trust me <laughs> very much, indeed. If it fits on the grabber, there it fits on the grabber. That's the trust that my students have in me because it will crack. Okay? But definitely the grabber is much, much easier to use. Thank you for the suggestion, class. <laughs> yeah, for beginners, this is much easier, although you should learn to use the ponty. Okay? Because in many other chances or occasion, you cannot uh, use the grabber. There are many chances or occasion. Please. So now I've got the detail on that one wing. Now I've just got to kind of go back and tune the other one in to match that one. OK. Now, as soon as I finish, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to cut the top off. Hopefully, we're going to be able to. Flare it open, and then we're going to put the piece inside that annealer because uh, otherwise it's going to crack, because there are too many joints. So bear with me that you're going to see the piece probably tomorrow when it comes out to the annealer. We're going to take a photograph and put it on, uh, on the YouTube channel. That's usually what they do. OK? So can you hold it? Door? I like that. Thanks. OK, so we got this piece. And now things are getting a little bit on the heavy side. There's always a chance that you hit the floor, but you know, that's part of life, of the life of glass, actually. I'm kind of on the last moves for this piece other than actually detaching it from the handle that I've, from the point handle that I've just made it on. So before I do that, I just want to let it set in the kiln again with all those carves. It's kind of iffy whether it wants to crack or not. And then while I let that warm back up, I just get my claw grabbers ready. Just warm them up a little bit. They don't have to glow. It's not bad. No? Nah, perfect. Eh? I like it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But the owl is solid. Yep, yeah, solid. So what he's done for that is just striped black over a piece of clear. And that way he didn't have to use all the black. You want those? Can you grab those like this? So, so is this Actually, J James, yes. grab the tweezer that she has. On your right? Yeah, can you, can you come on my right? Wait. No, can you knock it off? Mm -hmm. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. OK. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you.
Yeah, because as soon as this gets wrapped up, we're going for this kiln back here. So I'm trying to work on the side of the flame. Okay. So do you have gloves? Yeah. What we need. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. So the final piece is gonna look like this with this inside. And you will see it tomorrow, okay? But can you help me? Can you grab it? Uh, it's gonna be slick. It's all right. I'm gonna do it. Okay, just put it. Well, good. Now James is gonna finish this. Are you done with that? Just gotta get it off the handle. Okay. Another three minutes. I want to tell you that uh, we're almost there. I want to tell you that before we did this, in, the, in another class here, uh, we have an, an American Indian, Indian American, I don't know how to pronounce it, a native Indian American. His name is Doug. Uh, he's a great guy, he's a great glass blower, but also a great guy. Uh, I met him in Pilchak um, three weeks ago, well, four weeks ago. So since we are, we don't want to offend anybody that has that kind of background. Before we did this piece that has uh, some of the motive of his uh, culture, what we decided to do, we decided to ask his permission, and he gave it his permission kindly to make a piece that has uh, those kind of symbols. And I thought it was good to ask permission before doing it, to be respectful of uh, other people's culture, particularly a culture that has been uh, uh, mistreated and uh, almost annihilated from the face of the earth by the British colonists. Anyway, even Italians. So that's what I wanted to let you know. And so if we have another few minutes, I'm going to show something else. Okay. I'm going to make a, a tumbler. You know? It's open. Yeah. So I've just made this opening so that this tube doesn't want to collapse. Uh, we kind of changed our spot process along the way a little bit. This yes, was, we did. And I didn't really plan on making this a solid connect, uh, closing on the end. No, but, but no, totally closing. We're, we're just adapting. Yeah. So in order to keep anything from going wrong there, I just have to create right. an opening in the bottom. And I'm just going to stick this in a little count and that's... Yeah. I would flip it upside down, flip but I'm afraid. Upside. Aww. If it falls, it falls, it falls. Yeah, it's beautiful. So that's going to be the stopper on the very top. So we thought about this piece sort of like a, leave it there with that, leave it there with that, yeah. Sort of like a totemic, like a totem, the three pieces. So since we have another uh, almost 10 minutes uh, and we are still in class, in class mood, uh, thank you, James. Yeah, thank I think you. we get to give a hand to All James. Right. Thank you. And uh, so you can see, he's very good. He even made goblets over there. So he doesn't only make those things. I'm going to show you just a tumbler. So uh, can I, James? Yes, Thank we've got you. plenty of time. Well, I'll ask your permission, unless you want to make a tumbler. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Uh, let's see, do I have a, yeah, I have a stringer. So I'm going to use the remaining 10 minutes to make a tumbler. And uh, the tumblers that I'm making now, this new series of tumblers, because we have to make series. Oh, thank you. What is it? Black. The black? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. Um, I make them as normal tumblers first. So I worked uh, all my life to learn to make them perfect, cylindrical. And, and then after I finish them, before I put them in the annealer, or before I put them up top of here, I basically deform them. And I like them better than the perfect one. But I can take the liberty of deforming them now since I know how to make them perfect. I don't know if it were, if it is the right. So basically, I learned the rules first. And then uh, I took the liberty of breaking them. 
defending him. That it works in <laughs> every culture or in every field except uh, when you're dealing with the government, right? So it's going to take me about, uh, yeah, about six, seven minutes, maybe 10 at the most. So we're going to do an hour. Huh? Again, make the constrictions on both sides. Let it cool down a little bit. Actually, and that's probably about the same size tubing as we started with for the for the owl. Maybe not yeah. as heavy wall uh, wall thickness as heavy. I know it's heavy wall. This it is. A yep. So I can make it a little bit taller. So with your eyes, you have to judge not only the heat, but if there are any hot spot. And if you have any hot spot, you know it's going to blow off center. So what do you do? You come out of the flame, let it cool down, and then reheat it again. Don't blow it out if there is hot spot. Okay. When I look at it, I recenter it. I can feel the heat. OK. Now I'm going to heat up the center, let it shrink down, and stretch into a cylinder. We're almost there. It's a very quick one, so it's not going to be super perfect since we don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I'm not Martin, so I don't, I cannot touch you. <laughs> Finish the bottom. Yeah, it's fine, but it's too short. Don't you have a longer one? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. You're welcome. Sorry. So this is a fast one. I'm not trying to make anything fancy and perfect. Okay. That's long, man. That's all right. I cut yeah. off a piece. Everything running. It's really bad. Oh, 12 o'clock. Lunch time. Right? Like the move? <laughs> <laughs> it was falling down. <laughs> yes. 
uh, in private. Yeah. I'll let you know. Well, it was falling down. Oh, man. There you are. Almost there. Opening and deforming, OK? Do you mind, James, if I took over? Nope, you're, you're okay. in charge. So I want to open it a little bit. You can do it with one, op with one go, but. Anyone at home watching, those are graphite jacks that Emilio's made. They kind of keep the tool marks down yeah. a little, keep the cool, tool marks a little smoother. And you can stay in the flame. So the tumbler is done. It's a very quick one. It's not a perfect one, but leave it there. Don't worry. OK. And now we're going to deform it. So what I'm going to do is going to, this is my new line of objects. I make them perfect, and then I deform them. Not only tumblers, I'm going to do other objects as well. So. There you are. And this is the final object. So if you go on my, on my Instagram account, you can see a, a set of them. This one's going to go inside the annealer because there are certain places that they touched. Or actually, we can put it here. And if it breaks, it breaks. Who cares? So it's just for the demo. And that's what it looks like when it's done. OK? Thank you very much for watching. Yeah. Uh, I hope that. Uh, you learned something, and uh, I hope to see you again next year. And good luck with your life as a glassblower. It's very tough making a living. Thank you. <laughs>